God be gracious unto me, the sinner. God be gracious unto me, the sinner. God be gracious unto me, the sinner. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. O heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, of wisdom, heal our infirmities for our name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Because of my sin, my iniquity. 
for mine iniquities are gone over my head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and are cut because of my foolishness. I am troubled, I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long, for my wounds are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken, I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panteth, my strength faileth me. As for the light of mine eyes, it is also gone from me. My lovers and my friends stand aloof from my sword, and my kinsmen stand afar off. They also that seek after my life lay space for me, and they that seek my hurts speak mischievous things, and imagine deceits all the day long. But I, as a deaf man, heard not, and I was as, as a dumb man, a dumb man that openeth not his mouth. Thus I was as a man that heareth not, and in whose mouth there are no reproofs. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. For I said, Hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me, when my foot slippeth. They magnify themselves against me. For I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin, but mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the thing that good is. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek after my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth, parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes, but the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of him that speak lies shall be stopped. I meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 and glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 and glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 and glory to thee, O God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh into the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit, and as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness of the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Thou hast put away mine acquaintances far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me, thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water, they compassed me about together. Lover and friend dost thou put far from me, and mine acquaintances in the darkness. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, and incline thine ear unto my cry. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within thee. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. 
He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for men, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hopes, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness, and enter not at the judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me, my heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old, and meditate on all thy works, I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the wherein, wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, I flee unto thee to hide me. <coughs> Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good, lead me to the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble, and of thy mercy cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. O Lord, give ear to my supplications, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. O Lord, give ear to my supplications, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy spirit is good, lead me into the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. O Lord, our hope, glory to thee. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the good estate of the holy churches of God, and the union of all men, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and those who with faith, reverence, and fear of God enter therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Father and Metropolitan Saba, the Honorable Presbytery, the Diaconate in Christ, all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, civil authorities, and armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and every city and countryside and the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For healthful seasons, abundance of the fruits of the earth, and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have for travelers by sea, by land, and by air, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit 
and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. All in remembrance are all holy, immaculate, holy most blessed and glorious Lord, Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To Thine is the might, and thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The soldiers who kept watch over thy grave, O Savior, became as dead from the shining of the appearing angel, who told the good tidings of the resurrection to the women. Thee, therefore, do we glorify, O remover of corruption, and to thee do we bow, O thou who didst rise from the grave. O thou, our only Lord, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou wast nailed upon the cross willingly, O merciful one, and thou wast placed in the grave like one who is dead, O giver of life, trampling the pride of death, O, o mighty one. 
For because of thee, the gatekeepers of Hades did tremble, and thou didst raise the dead with thee from eternity, for thou alone art the lover of mankind, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The mystery which was hidden from everlasting, and was unknown of the angels, O Theotokos, was revealed through thee to those who dwell upon the earth, and that God, having become incarnate in unconfused union, of his own good will, accepted the cross for our sake, whereby he raised again the first created and hath saved our souls from death. Verily did the women proceed to the grave early, where they beheld an angelic scene and did tremble. And when the grave shone forth with light, they were struck with astonishment. Wherefore they returned to the disciples and preached the resurrection, saying, Verily Christ hath invaded Hades, for he alone is the powerful and mighty one. He raised with him all those who were corrupt, and with the power of his cross he removed the fear of condemnation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou wast verily nailed upon the cross, O life of all, and wast numbered among the dead, O deathless Lord. Thou didst rise after three days, O Savior, and didst raise Adam from corruption. Wherefore, the heavenly power shouted to thee, O giver of life. Glory to thy passion, O Christ. Glory to thy resurrection. Glory to thy condescension, O thou who alone the lover of mankind. Now endeavor not to wait, to survey this Amen. O Mary, the revered abode of the Lord, lift us who have fallen in the midst of evil despair, trespasses and sorrows, for thou didst give salvation to sinners. Thou art a helper and a strong intercessor, and to save thy sin, and to save thy servants. Thank you. 
because of his servant shall he be comforted. Alleluia. The idols of the nation, till silver and gold, the works of the hands of men. Alleluia. They have a mouth but shall not.
begin in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lord Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. The repentance of the thief gave him, gained him paradise by stealth, and the sign of the ointment bearing women proclaimed the glad tidings that thou hast risen, O Christ and hath bestowed upon the world thy great mercy. O Lord, to thee in my sorrows do I cry, and <coughs> without my cry of pain. Verily the divine desire shall be without delay upon the people of the wilderness, for that they have come out of the vain world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages and ages. Amen. Verily glory and honor become the Holy Spirit, as they become the Father and the Son. Wherefore do we praise the triune, one in mind. O God, since thou hast raised me to the hills of thy laws, shed brightly thy light of virtue upon me, that I may praise thee. O word, hold me fast with thy right hand, keep me and preserve me, lest the fire of sin consume me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily all creation together is regenerated by the Holy Spirit, and returns to its former being, for he is co-omnipotent with the Father and the Word. My soul did rejoice with those who say, Let us go into the courts of the Lord. My heart was exceedingly glad. Great fear shall be in the house of David, where the seats shall, seats shall be set, and all tribes and tongues of the earth shall be judged. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, it is meet to offer glory, might, and power to the Holy Spirit, as to the Father and to the Son, for the Trinity is one in substance, not in person. The mountains broke even on. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set myself for salvation. I will make no tarry therein. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set myself for salvation. I will make no tarry Pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For holy art thou, O our God, who restest in the holy place, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Beseech the Lord our God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Wisdom, stand upright, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to thy spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Let us attend. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. When he had said this, 
he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you, as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the prints of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, you have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are you those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have love. In his name. I 
people and bless thine inheritance. Visit thy world with mercies and bounties, exalt the estate of Orthodox Christians, and send down upon us thy rich mercies. Through the intercessions of our all immaculate Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner and Baptist John, and of all the holy prophets, of the holy glorious and all laudable apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the holy apostles, of our fathers among the saints, great hierarchs and ecumenical teachers, Basil the great Gregory the theologian and John Chrysostom, of our fathers among the saints, Athanasius, Cyril, and John the Merciful, Patriarchs of Alexandria, Nicholas of Mira, Spirit, and of Trimethus, and Nectarius of Pentapolis, the Wonder Workers, Nikolai of Zicha, who labored in America, Innocent Evangelizer of Alaska, and Tikhon, Patriarch of Moscow, Enlighteners of North America, John, the Wonder Worker of Shanghai and San Francisco, Raphael of Brooklyn, the Presbyters, Jacob of Alaska and Alexis of Wilkesbury, of the holy glorious great martyrs, George the trophy bearer, Demetrius the Merce streaming, Theodore the soldier, Theodore the general, and Minos the wonder worker, of the higher martyrs, Ignatius the god bearer of Antioch, Girolambo, Selefterius, Cosmos of Atolia, Juvenalia of Iliamna, John and Alexander missionaries to America, and higher martyrs of the Bolshevik yoke, of the holy glorious great women martyrs, Thecla, Barbara, Anastasia, Catherine, Kyria, Key, Fotini, Marina, Paraskeva, Irene, and Elizabeth, the Grand Duchess, new martyr of Russia, of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, especially Peter the Aleut, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers and mothers who shone in the ascetic life, Anthony the Great, Sergius of Radonej, Seraphim of Seraph, Herman of Alaska, Silouan of Mount Athos, and Mary of Egypt, of Saint Philip, the Apostle, patron and protector of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of our righteous father, Artiman, the holy hierarch, Artiman Presbyter of Laodicea, our righteous father, Zecharias, our righteous father, Martin of Thebes, the holy new higher martyr, Parthenius, patriarch of Constantinople, the holy martyr, Stephen and Peter of Kazan, whose memory we celebrate today, and of all the saints, we beseech thee, O merciful Lord, hearken unto the petition of us sinners who make our supplications unto thee, and have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Theodora during the Patriarchate of St. Methodios the Confessor. 
I rejoice as I see them fittingly reverence the icons formerly unfittingly banished. This restoration was accomplished in the year 843. Theodora's husband was an iconoclast. After his death, Theodora venerated an icon of the Theotokos in front of Patriarch Methodios. The other faithful in the church did the same, venerating all the icons, considering them to be representations of their original elements, not idols. Theodora prayed to God to forgive her husband during the first week of Great Lent, and on the first Sunday of the fast, she led the way in hanging up the icons to adorn the churches. O oh, invariant icon of the Father, through the intercessions of thy holy confessors, have mercy on us. Amen. and mother of the light, let us honor and magnify in song. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who with us sing, bearest of the word, and art truly theotokos, he magnifies. Fourth all generations shall call me blessed. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without sin bearest God the word, and art truly theotokos, we magnify thee. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him. Throughout all generations. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest of the word, and art truly theotokos, we magnify thee. He hath shown strength with his arm, he hath scattered the fraud in the imagination of their court. More honorable than the 
and have exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the empty with good things, and the rich have thee sent empty away. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who with God saying bearest double worth, and art truly theotokos to magnify thee. Be remembering his mercy, and hope and his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou with all strength bearest of the word, and art truly fail to oppose be magnified here. And on you who stone a virgin, opposite the mountain was cut, but not by hand. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Thank you. 
the cross and abolish death and its rise again from the dead. Give peace to our life, O Lord, for Thou only art Almighty. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. O Thou, who didst despoil hell and raise man again from the dead, by Thy resurrection, O Christ, make us worthy with Your words to praise and glorify Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet, praise Him with the psaltery and bar. Glorifying Thy divine condescension, we praise Thee, O Christ, for Thou wast born of a virgin, yet wast not separated from the Father. When Thou didst suffer as a man, as of thine own free will endured the cross, and thou didst re rise again from the tomb, going forth as from a bridal chamber, that thou mightest save the world, O Lord, glory to thee.
O Lord, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. O Lord, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, Thou that takest away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, O Thou that sittest at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, O Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever, yea, forever and ever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers, and praise and glorify be thy name forever. Amen. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we do put our hope in thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes.
Master. As it is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the good estate of the holy churches of God, and the union of all men, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and those who with faith, reverence, and fear of God enter therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Father and Metropolitan Saba, the Honorable Presbytery, the Diaconate in Christ, all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President, Civil Authorities, and Armed Forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord every city and countryside and the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For healthful seasons, abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by sea, by land and by air, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. with majesty. The Lord is robed, he is girded with strength, for he hath established the world so sure that it shall never be moved. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can cause all his praises to be heard? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, Again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our whole holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Thee, For thine is the might and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit 
now and ever and unto ages of ages. Praise the Lord for his mercies and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Save us, O Son of God, who art risen from the dead, who sing to thee, Alleluia. and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God.
Listen to the Holy Gospel. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. At that time, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the Lord and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him 
and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to, to Jesus, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than this. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the year 843, on the first Sunday of Great Lent, the Empress Theodora declared an end to this iconoclast period. The persecution that had begun under Leo the Asaurian had continued right up through the time of her own husband, Theophilus. He had been a relentless persecutor of those who venerated icons, but now he was dead. And she, who was a secret lover of the icons, could restore the icons as objects of veneration. This period of iconoclasm was known as the century of blood because more Christians had suffered and died during that Christian-on-Christian -Christian persecution than all the years of martyrdom from the time of Jesus up to that point. Theodora asked the people of Constantinople to fast during this first week of Lent in an act of repentance for the sins of her husband and also all of those who had persecuted the lovers of icons. Today, we celebrate the icons and we remember these martyrs. It is fitting to begin Lent with the remembrance of martyrdom, which itself really is the triumph of orthodoxy. Only through martyrdom do we and the church triumph, and that is the message and the task of Great Lent. Now, it may seem strange to you that someone would be willing to die for an icon. Why are they so precious to us? Well, at stake is the most fundamental of all Christian beliefs, that Jesus Christ is God in human flesh. He is fully God and fully man. The Gospel reading that we hear on Pascha, that high point of the Christian year, is the prologue of the Gospel of John that proclaims that the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. The invisible God has become a visible man. And if this is true, then he can be depicted. The Seventh Ecumenical Council proclaimed that indeed he can be depicted in words and in images. And veneration of the image goes not to the wood and the paint, but to the one who's depicted, the prototype. Listen to the Kentakion for today, which itself is a verbal icon. It says, no one could describe the word of the Father. But when he took flesh from you, O Theotokos, he consented to be described and restored the fallen image to its former state. 
by uniting it to divine beauty. We confess and proclaim our salvation in words and images. Now the first part of that contachion says that the invisible God is indescribable. But when the second person of the Trinity took flesh from Mary, the invisible God became a visible man while remaining fully God. The second part of that contachion says why God became a man to restore the fallen image, the icon, the icon, to its former state. How did that restoration of our fallen image take place? Well, the Kantakian says that as well. It says, by uniting it to divine beauty. Adam failed to be the icon of God, the image of God that he was created to be, and all of us fail just as did Adam. But Christ, the second Adam, the last Adam, the true Adam, he came to restore our fallen image by uniting it to divine beauty. When we unite ourselves to Christ, the divine beauty, we too experience this restoration of the image of God in us. The process begins at our baptism and it continues in us as we grow in faith and grace. It's a dynamic task for us to accomplish throughout the entirety of our life. Now we're free to choose to be a distorted caricature of God, a cartoon image of God, allowing his image to remain in us obscure, distorted, or we can choose to become completely transfigured like the Lord on Mount Tabor, or Moses, whose face glowed so brightly when he descended Mount Sinai that he had to wear a veil so the people could look at him, or Saint Seraphim of Seraph, as he spoke with Motovilov, appearing to be a face surrounded by the burning sun. Today's gospel lesson bids us to come and see. This is precisely what the Sunday of Orthodoxy and the restoration of the icons is all about. Come and see. When Jesus called Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip went to Nathanael, and he said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. But Nathanael pushes back on him and he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? How might I have responded myself to a snarky reply like that. I probably would have browbeaten Nathaniel in an argument about the scriptures maybe, some kind of first century uh, version of a Twitter battle perhaps, but that's not what Philip did. He knew that what was necessary for Nathaniel and for all of us too was not words, but a personal meeting with Christ, to come and see, to see Christ ourselves face to face. And the place where that meeting occurs par excellence today is in our worship. In worship, we make use of words, but far more than words are involved in our act of worship. In our literal use of words, we reach our reasoning brains, but by means of poetry, music, art, symbol, our ritual acts. We reach the other deeper layers of our human personality. We worship not through words only, but in a wide variety of other ways, through music, through the splendor of the priestly vestments, through the very design of this church building, through the symbolic gestures like the sign of the cross or the offering of incense or the lighting of a candle and through the employment of all the basic constituents of human life, water, wine, bread, fire, oil, and through the use of icons. You see, worship is more than a formal proclamation through spoken words. And our liturgical assembly is much more than a lecture and a concert. To we Orthodox Christians, it's of utmost importance that the act of worship express the joy and the beauty of the kingdom of heaven. 
Without that dimension of the beautiful, our worship will never succeed in being prayer in the fullest sense, prayer of the heart as well as of our reasoning brain. This joy and beauty of the kingdom cannot be properly expounded in abstract arguments and logical explanations. It must be experienced, not discussed. Come and see. And it is above all, through the physical sensory actions, through the burning of incense, the lighting of a lamp or a candle before an icon, that this living experience is rendered possible. And when we have met Christ in this way, in worship, we will recognize him to be the Son of God, just as did Nathaniel in today's Gospel. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. And we will hear him say to us as well, you will see greater things than these. You will see heaven opened. Now, I've never attempted to write an icon, but I've watched with admiration those who do. And we have a resident iconographer in Karsten with his studio and something like 20 students over in the St. Nicholas house. And if you watch, the process begins with the tracing of the outline of the image. According to the traditional pattern, on the wood, and then with prayer and fasting, gradually the layers and the colors are added to fill in that image. The process is really similar in us. After all, we are the living icons of God. Those first lines that outline the image, they're redrawn in us at our baptism, restoring the image of God. And it is our life's task with prayer and fasting, by faith and by grace, to fill in the colors, to let the image reveal more and more of the very beauty and likeness of the prototype. May we accept the invitation to come and see as we celebrate the restoration of the icons all those years ago, and may the image of God be restored fresh in us today as we unite ourselves to the divine beauty that is Christ our Savior. Amen. Catechumens. Let us, the faithful, pray for the catechumens that the Lord will have mercy on them, that He will teach them the word of truth, that He will reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that He will unite them to His holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. them, have mercy on them, help them, and keep them, O God, by thy grace. Bow your heads to the Lord, ye catechumens. And all of our catechumens who have bowed their necks before thee, grant them the light yoke. Make them honorable members of thy holy church and make them worthy of the labor of regeneration, the forgiveness of sins, the robe of incorruption, unto knowledge of thee, our true God. That with us they may glorify thine all honorable and majestic name, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. As many as our catechumens depart, depart catechumens, as many as our catechumens depart, let none of the catechumens remain. 
As many as are of the faithful, again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom. That God is always by thy might. Praise God, glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. of the flesh is worthy to approach or to draw near to serve thee, O King of glory, for to serve thee is the great and fearful thing, even to the heavenly powers. Nevertheless, we have to speak of all that is left in that it's become many of the natural and natural operations, as we all just take on the deliver unto us the
new and expectant mothers and their children, the people of our land, and further repentance, healing, and unity, and all we have in mind. May the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The Orthodox servants of God who have departed this life and the hope of resurrection life in the age to come, especially the newly departed Marina, newly departed Shota, Rajib, Lorraine, Julia, Helen, Dina, Robert, Adele, and all of our beloved departed in Christ, may the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and forgiveness of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Our whole holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Love one another that 
with one accord we may confess. attend. Let us stand right, let us stand with fear, let us attend that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. Singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, holy, holy, with these blessed powers we also have, cry aloud and say, O sinners, holy art thou, the truth and the holy, and there is no bound to the majesty of thy holiness. Just art thou in all thy works, and righteousness and perfection.
words, the prophets who foretold unto us the salvation which was to come. Thou didst give us the law as an aid, thou didst appoint guardian angels. And when the fullness of time was come, thou didst speak unto us through thy Son himself, by whom also thou madest the ages, who being the brightness of thy glory and the express image of thy person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to thee, the God and Father. But though he, though he was God before all the ages, yet he appeared upon earth and dwelt among men, and was incarnate of a holy virgin, and emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, becoming conformed to the body of our lowliness, that he might make us conformable to the image of his glory. For as by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, so it seemed good to thine only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, to be born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and of her virgin Mary, to be born under the law, that he might condemn sin in his flesh, that they who were dead in Adam might be made alive in him by Christ. And becoming a citizen of this world and giving commandments of salvation, he released us from the delusion of idols and brought us into a knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, having won us unto himself for his own people, a royal priest and a holy nation. And having purified us by water and having sanctified us by the Holy Spirit, he gave himself a ransom to death whereby we were held sold into bondage under sin. And having descended into Hades through the cross that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the pains of death and rose again on the third day, making a way for all flesh unto the resurrection from the dead. For it was not possible that the author of life should be held by corruption, that he might be the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn from the dead, that he might be in all things the first among all. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he shall come again to render unto every man according to his works. And he hath left with us as memorials of his saving passion these things which he have set forth according to his commandments. For when he was about to go to his voluntary and ever memorable and life giving death in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and immaculate hands. And when he had shown it unto thee, the God and Father, and given thanks and blessed it and hallowed it and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. In like manner, having taken the cup of the fruit of the vine and mingled it and given thanks and blessed it and hallowed it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you shall eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, my death and confess my resurrection. Wherefore, O Master, we also have the remembrance of saving passion, life and death, this three-day human resurrection from the dead, his ascension to heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Son, and of thee, the God and Father, in his glorious and fearful second coming. Thine own Confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially our all holy, immaculate, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, 
and ever Virgin Mary. For the Holy Prophet, for the Baptist, and the Holy Glory, and all the Holy Apostles. Grant them rest to our God with the light of thy countenance, as watches over them again. We beseech to be mindful of the holy Catholic and apostolic church, which is to the ends of the world to give peace in the room now, which is to the precious blood of thy Christ, and establish now this holy house even to the ends of the age. Be mindful, Lord, of those who travel, who have set, set before thee these gifts, and those for whom and through whom and on behalf of whom they have offered them. Be mindful, Lord, of those who bear fruit and their good works. Receive us all into thy kingdom, showing us to be sons of the light and sons of the day, and grant unto us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for all things hast thou given unto us. And grant us with one mouth and one heart to glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. And the mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious 
gifts which have been spread forth and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our God, who loveth mankind, receiving them upon his holy, most heavenly, and ideal altar as a savor of spiritual sweetness, will send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. A faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and forgiveness of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. That we also, together with all the saints, a Christian ending to our life painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Asking for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. sittest on high with the Father, and art here invisibly present with us, and vouchsafe by the mighty hand to impart us to, act, to impart unto us an immaculate body, precious blood, and through us unto all the people. O God, be gracious unto me, the sinner. O God, be gracious unto me, the sinner. O God, be gracious unto me, the sinner. Let us attend. The holy things are full.
save thy people and bless thine inheritance. our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. having partaken of the divine, holy, immaculate, immortal, heavenly, life-giving, and dread mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. icons with you, please join us for the great entrance here. If you haven't received one of these pieces of paper, please grab it.
as the prophets beheld. As the apostles beheld. All together, please, starting from the beginning. As the prophets beheld, as the apostles have taught, as the church has received, as the Jesus have dogmatized, as the universe has agreed, as grace has shown forth, as truth has revealed, as falsehood has been dissolved, as wisdom has presented, as Christ awarded, thus we declare, thus we assert, thus we preach Christ our true God, and honor his saints in words, in writings, in thoughts, in sacrifices, in churches, in holy icons, on the one hand, worshiping and reverencing Christ as God and Lord, and on the other hand, honoring the saints as the true servants of the same Lord of all, accordingly offering them veneration. This is the faith of the apostles. This is the faith of the fathers. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is the faith which has established the world. Synodicon that we just all read from. Furthermore, we receive and confirm the counsels of the Holy Fathers and their traditions and writings which are agreeable to divine revelation. And though there be enemies of orthodoxy and adversaries to the providential and salutary revelation of the Lord towards us, Yet the Lord considered the reproaches of his servants, for he has covered the blasphemers of his glory with shame, and shown the perverters and enemies of orthodoxies of orthodoxy as timorous and fugitives. As therefore we bless and praise those who have submitted their reason to the obedience of divine revelation and have contended for it, so following the sacred scriptures and holding the traditions of the early church, we reject and anathematize those who oppose his truth, if while awaiting their conversion and repentance, they refuse to repent to the Lord. To those who deny the existence of God and assert that the world is self-existing and that all things in it were made by chance without the providence of God, anathema. 
to those who say that God is not a spirit but flesh, that he is not just, merciful, not wise or omniscient, and utter such blasphemies, anathema. To those who dare to say that the Son of God and likewise the Holy Spirit are not in one essence with the Father and confess that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are not one God, anathema. To those who foolishly say that the coming of the Son of God in the world in the flesh and his voluntary passion and death and resurrection were not necessary for our salvation and the expiation of sins, anathema. To those who reject the grace of redemption preached by the gospel as the only means of our justification before God, anathema. To those who dare to dare say that the All-Holy Virgin was not a virgin before her childbirth, during her childbirth, and after her childbirth, anathema. To those who do not believe that the Holy Spirit inspired the prophets and apostles, and by them instructed us in the true way to eternal salvation, and confirmed the same by miracles, and now dwells in the hearts of all the faithful and true Christians, and guides them in, the tr in all the truth, anathema. To those who reject the immortality of the soul, the end of the world, the future judgment and eternal rewards for virtue in heaven and condemnation for sins, anathema. anathema. To those who reject any of the holy sacraments held by the Church of Christ, anathema. anathema. To those who renounce the counsel of the Holy Fathers and their traditions which are agreeable to divine revelation and piously preserved by the Orthodox Church, anathema. anathema. To those who insult and blaspheme the holy icons which the Church receives in remembrance of the works of God and of those pleasing to Him, to inspire their believers to, with piety and to incite them to imitate their examples, and to those who say they are, they are idols, anathema. anathema. But to all who have contended for orthodoxy by their words, their writings, their teaching, by their sufferings and religious life, and unto the protectors and defenders of it, the Church of Christ commemorates annually and proclaims. To the Holy Fathers, great hierarchs, ecumenical teachers, Athanasius, Cyril, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, John Chrysostom, Methodius, Cyril, and all the other pastors of the Church, memory eternal. To the Holy and Most Pious Emperor Constantine, equal to the Apostles, and his mother Helen, to the Orthodox Emperors, Theodosius the Great, Theodosius the Younger, and Justinian, and all the pious Orthodox rulers, memory eternal. Memory to the most holy patriarchs and most holy Orthodox metropolitans, archbishops, and bishops, memory eternal. Memory to all who have suffered and fallen in various battles in defense of the Orthodox faith and of their countries, and to all Orthodox Christians who have died in the true faith and piety, in the hope of the resurrection, memory eternal. Memory to the faithful founders of our holy parish and those who have gone to their rest in the hope of resurrection and life eternal, memory eternal. Memory the Orthodox Church of Christ thus triumphantly commemorates those who in times past contend in piety, thereby to excite all her Christians to follow their example, does also have the duty to extol those who labor for orthodoxy, and by salutary faith and virtue, virtue prepare themselves for eternal be beatitude. To His Holiness, our Patriarch John, to His Eminence, our Metropolitan Saba, to His Grace, our Bishop Thomas, and orth all Orthodox bishops, may God grant them many years. Many years. To all those in civil authority, O Lord, Peace, grant peace, health, salvation, prosperity, and all their public undertakings, and preserve them in true honor for many years. To all Orthodox Christians holding rightly the saving faith and living in obedience to the Church of Christ, grant, O Lord, peace, quiet, prosperity, abundance of the fruits of the earth, and many years. Glorify these, O Holy Trinity, and confirm them in the right faith even unto the end and convert the corruptors and blasphemies of the Orthodox faith in Christ Church, who are disobedient to her, that they may come to the knowledge of your eternal truth through the intercessions of our Most Holy Lady, the Theotokos, and Ever-Virgin Mary, and of all the saints. 
Amen. Amen. We'll have the Sunday school dismissal. Better end the liturgy first, though. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love for mankind always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to thee. He who rose again from the dead for our salvation, Christ our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother by the precious might of the precious and life giving cross, through the prayers of our Father among the saints, Basil the Great, Saint Theodora, the Patriarch, Methodius, and of all the defenders, confessors, and martyrs for the holy icons. And all the saints whose memory we celebrate have mercy upon us and save us. For as much as he is good and loveth mankind, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, the Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us. the Sunday School Dismissal now. Everybody else, please stay in your seat. We're very happy to have a special guest today, uh, Michael Peck, Peck and his wife, seminarians at uh, St. Ticons that are preparing for missionary work in the, the Diocese of Mexico. We'll be hearing from Michael about his intended work, and thank you all for your support of his work and all missionaries and seminarians.
day which the Lord has made. We're done with the week of the fast. I hope it's been a blessed time for you. If you haven't started fasting yet, it's not too late. And if you are tired of fasting already, that's okay. I am too. But let's try to keep, keep the fast, keep our eyes on the prize. Uh, Gabriel Musicari is going to ask us to support the teens in their trip, their mission trip this summer, and their offering the coffee hour, not today, but next week, right? Yeah. Hello everyone, Christ is in our midst. So as many of you may know, the Appalachian area, especially the more southern area, is very impoverished. And more specifically, they have very poor living conditions down there. So we've been working with a Orthodox church in Connecticut to train and prepare to go in the summer to minister to individual families and try to give them better places to live because it is really hard for them when they have low incomes and you know elderly people to take care of and kids to take care of to um, do things themselves, like fix things up themselves. So, and these living conditions can, can oft, often be very dangerous, like caving in roofs, black mold, things like that. So we, we want to just help and try to minister to them like Christ and his apostles ministered to people. And we're not trying to preach to them or proselytize to them, but we just want to help them and show them the fruits of a Christian life and maybe plant a seed of faith in their hearts. So we ask you next week to please generate don uh, donate generously to us. No, no announcement is uh, perfect without us asking you for money. So. <laughs> So yeah, we ask you to, to please open your wallets this Lent and give us money. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Thank you. So Gabe, you should preach to them a little bit. Not, not preachy, but you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your support for them next week and your prayers for our teens and all the youth of our parish. Tomorrow is the great feast of the Annunciation. We have liturgy tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Orthros at 9 a.m., Great Vespers tonight at 6.30. We have pre-sanctified Wednesday night and Friday morning. If you're going to receive, make sure you are fasting at least six hours from, from lunch on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday lunch. Everybody should, in the church should come to confession this Lent. Before Lazarus Saturday, pretty please. The sooner the better. We don't want to come to the resurrection with our white garments sooted because we have not brought them to the dry cleaner. Next Saturday we have a prayer rope making workshop following uh, Great Vespers. If you are interested in learning how to make a prayer rope, it's not that hard. I've tried to learn a couple times and I failed each time but I'm sure a trained monkey would be, would be okay to do it. Our youth choir is singing the Akathist hymn and reading Compline this, this Friday night. Please come to that service. In general, make sure you come to at least one of the great Complines of the fast, one of the little Complines and Akathist of the fast, and pre-sanctified liturgy is a must for each of us if we're really fasting and praying and being generous throughout the week as we should. We should be hungry for God at the middle of the week, Wednesday night. And speaking of hunger for God, uh, Michael and his wife, Carlin, uh, third year, he's a third year seminarian at St. Ticon's and has been hungry for God for much of his life and is now filled as much as we can be filled and ready to give back. And he's been called, I'm guess it's, guessing it's mysterious the way it happened. It's, he's been called to work in the Diocese of Mexico and work in training priests there. Um, 
and it was, a, it was an honor for me to teach him this last fall in the pastoral care class, and he was an excellent student, and I know that he'll be excellent in the mission field. Okay, Michael. Um, for the folks that are on the sides, uh, forgive me, I guess I have to speak directly into this. So if I'm not looking at you, I'm speaking to you too. So. Um, can you hear me? Louder, louder. Louder, louder. Yeah, you really got to be loud. Okay, hold on. All right. You guys heard that first part, you guys, the people on the sides? I'm, I'm speaking to you too, but I'm gonna be speaking straight ahead because I gotta speak into the mic, so forgive me. Um, very reverend and reverend fathers, father deacons, curias, presbyteras, matrikas, brothers and sisters, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory uh, like Father Noah stated, my name is Michael. I'm a third year seminarian at St. Tikhans. I'm here with my wife, Carla Nixenia. She's in the back left corner there. Um, this is our first visit to St. Philip's Orthodox Church, and we are very happy to be here today. Um, often after liturgies, I think about how beautiful an experience it was, right? How much of a blessing it was for, uh, that we were able to partake in the fullness of faith. Whether you were born into the Orthodox Church or you converted from some other tradition, the bottom line is that this is a faith and practice that was brought to us, right? It was given to us, either from persons like your parents or a priest, or through the work of others. Some people somewhere took the time to establish orthodoxy in a way in which you were able to come in contact with it. Now I understand that this community is already familiar with OCMC and has had a history of supporting missionaries, so for your sakes, I will forego the usual introductory stuff since it is evident that this parish community already has a heart for missions. Instead, I will tell you a couple of short stories. About six years ago, I had no intentions of serving in ministry or going to seminary. In fact, I was on a path towards becoming a doctor. But in 2018, I discovered Project Mexico. And the reasons why I signed up for home building that summer was because I was in the process of applying to medical school. And you know, a home building volunteer program would look great on a medical school application. But little did I know, God had something else in store for me that summer. I remember the hundreds of people, most of them Orthodox from all over North America, all converging at St. Innocent Orphanage in Rosarito, Mexico. All of these faithful Christians came to Mexico to do one thing, to put the love of Christ into action. And of course, with my luck, the week that I signed up for happened to be an OCMC week. So in the evenings, Father Martin Rizzi, the executive director of OCMC, would give talks on missions and evangelism. It was the first time in my life that the call to missions and evangelism was posed to me in a very direct way. I left Mexico that summer a different person. I left my heart in that country, and I knew that I would return again someday soon. My wife's experience in overseas missions is a bit more extensive than mine. Back when she was still a Protestant, she served at an orphanage in Haiti uh, during the winters of 2013 to 2016. And after we married, uh, Carlin and I had long discussions about possibly living out the rest of our days as missionaries. And through a turn of providential events, my path began to divert away from medical school and towards seminary. In 2021, we embarked on a journey from our comfortable lives on the West Coast and headed towards St. Tikhans. We weren't quite sure where this path was leading us, but through the help of Archimandrite Sergius, the abbot of St. Tikhans Monastery, we became acquainted with His Eminence, Archbishop Alejo of the OCA Diocese of Mexico. So it was apparent that God was indeed sending us back to Mexico. In the winter of 2022, His Eminence invited my wife and I to visit the diocese, and we were given an extensive tour of uh, certain areas impacted by both poverty and a shortage of clergy. And at one point, we were driven up into the tropical mountains of Veracruz with Padre Luis Antonio. He's one of our diocesan clergy. Up and down mountain roads in a four-wheel drive, all dirt roads, some of them almost completely washed out by storms. We headed to a remote destination. Before I continue on to give a word about Padre Luis Antonio, 
This is a man, a priest, who is married with children. He owns his own business. He's bivocational and lives in Mexico City. He is the rector of a robust parish, which he only has time enough on the weekends to dedicate to. And he uses all of his annual vacation time to work in the mountains of Veracruz. You see, this description of Padre Luis Antonio is typical for most of our diocesan clergy. So as you can see, the need is apparent. Padre Luis Antonio, my wife and I, stayed in a town called Sapote Bravo. It is an indigenous town that has an orthodox presence. This town has no potable water, no plumbing, no hospitals or public services, zero infrastructure. And for our safety, we had to bring our own food and water. To bathe, one had to hike down a steep, muddy, muddy road to get to a stream that everyone in town used. Most of the homes were makeshift structures made from cinder block and other materials that were found. The people that lived in this town were called the Otomi, and they had probably inhabited this region for centuries. Now as to the history of how this town became Orthodox is unknown to me, but all that I know was as soon as that Toyota four-wheel drive arrived, the people in that town knew they had exactly one week, one week where they would have access to a priest. You see, this town, Sapote Bravo, might see a priest maybe once a year, once every two years. And there isn't much time for catechism or religious education, since by the time the priest arrives, there's a backlog of baptisms and marriages that have to be performed. For the entire five days that we were in Sapote Bravo, we helped Padre Luis Antonio baptize dozens of children, marry numerous couples. And in the evening, there, were, there was a line outside Padre's door of people who needed help from the church. Padre Luis Antonio would field questions and help people until well after midnight, every night that we were there. Now I'll tell you right now, this was a tough week for Carlin and I. We weren't exactly ready for it. And when they said they were sending us to Veracruz, I said, Veracruz, sounds like a pleasant place. <laughs> it was, however, an amazing place in so many ways, a mission field devoid of many of the secular world's trappings, a deeply spiritual people, a people that only need the appropriate guidance and prescription. We cherish this, this experience because it gave us a taste of the challenges that are ahead for us. Just like my experience in Project Mexico, I left Zapote Bravo a changed man. Now during a return trip to Veracruz this past summer, a higher deacon by the name of Padre Dimitri, was, who was in the truck with us, pointed out various towns and villages as we drove by. He'd say, you see that town over there? That's Cruz Blanca. They have an Orthodox church. Or that village over the hill, that's Santa Maria. They also recognize as being Orthodox. So at one point during this drive, I asked Padre Dimitri exactly how many towns in Veracruz identify as Orthodox. I could see him thinking and counting in his head. And he says, eh, quizás 32 pueblos, 32 towns. 32 towns and villages have an Orthodox presence. And there's only one priest that services this entire area. We visited Mexico for a second time this past summer, and I was assigned to work as an intern at a mission chapel in Guanajuato. And during this two-month stay, we learned a lot more about other missions and parishes throughout our diocese. For instance, there's a chapel in Colima that was founded by a Russian expat couple called St. Nicholas of Myra. This mission does not have a full-time priest. Um, there's a priest that travels there every other week, Padre Jesus. He is a congressional lawyer in Mexico City and has to drive over 300 miles one way to get there. And on the Sundays that they do have a priest, they get about 20 or so people that show up for liturgy. Now get this, all of the people that show up, save one person, are all Roman Catholics. These Roman Catholics show up to sing in the choir because for some reason, Orthodox liturgical music draws them. These Catholics have been showing up to this chapel since its inception. Now imagine if this community has a, had a permanent priest. It's like you have 20 or so people almost ready to, be, ready to be made catechumens. Let that sink in for a moment. 
I'll tell you one more short story and then I'll wrap this up, I promise. There was a man named Bishop Jose Cortez of blessed memory. He was the ruling bishop of a breakaway Catholic church in Mexico called the Mexican National Catholic Church. I believe Bishop Jose was being led by the Holy Spirit when he contacted the rector of St. Seraphim Orthodox Church in Dallas, Texas. In 1965, Bishop Jose asked if the Mexicans could be received into the Orthodox Church. The rector of this parish at the time was Archimandrite Dimitri Royster of blessed memory. And as some of you already know, Father Dimitri would eventually become Archbishop Dimitri of the Diocese of the South. By 1971, Bishop Dimitri presented the Mexican National Catholic Church's case to the Holy Synod of the OCA. And in 1972, over 10,000 members of the Mexican National Catholic Church were received into the Orthodox Church. It's a pretty good start, right? But since 1972, although mission parishes have been established, a number of priests have been ordained, for the most part, the Diocese of Mexico has remained status quo, with no real growth. Although the country has been thoroughly missionized by the Roman Catholic Church, it is apparent that there is a growing number of people in Mexico that sense that something is missing in the Catholic faith. I've met a number of these folks, like the Catholic singers in Colima. They are curious. I think what they are sensing is the incarnate Christ, Christ in his fullness, Christ among us in an experiential and real way. The Mexican people have asked for and need the Orthodox faith. They want to inquire, they want to learn more. And our diocese is doing what it can to facilitate the need. But we just do not have the resources. It's been 59 years since Bishop Jose asked that the Mexican people could become Orthodox. And it's been 52 years since that door was opened. But opening the door seems to be the only significant thing that has occurred since then. There are literally people at this door who out of curiosity are looking in. We have young men in our diocese, our diocese who are ready to be trained as for priestly vocations. And from what I saw during our trip to Mexico, this is a land ripe for the harvest. And I think it has been since 1965. The question is, has the Orthodox Church adequately responded to this call? Mexico needs a seminary, they need monasteries, they need vocations, catechists, choir directors, iconographers, children ministry specialists, youth programs, college outreach. They need us, our, their brethren from the north, to help them. As of right now, I'm assigned to help complete the founding of Mexico's first Orthodox seminary, the San Basilio Orthodox Seminary. We are also developing the diocese's first Cenobitic men's monastery, which will be tied to the seminary, just like St. Tikhon's. This seminary is our greatest need because we need a way to train men and women for vocations, not only to fill the roles that I mentioned a second ago, but for so much more. God willing, His Eminence has plans to appoint me to be an instructor of liturgics at the new seminary once it's up and running. The seminary is about 80% complete, by the way, thank God. Carlin, my wife, and I will, be help, uh, will also be helping to found another mission parish in a city called Caretero. Our diocese is currently restructuring and has plans to implement new departments focused on missions and evangelism and religious education. So you see, all of this beautiful and necessary work of love can only be realized through our collective work in missions and evangelism. I am certain that if many of us could give up our jobs and dedicate our lives to living overseas and bringing Jesus Christ to his beloved children, we would. But the realities are, we have roots where we live, right? We have homes, families, obligations, businesses, parishes. And that's why people call, or that's why God calls people like Archbishop Anastasio and Nathan Hoppe of Albania, the interns of Project Mexico, Father John Chacos and Jesse Brando of Guatemala. People like my wife and I, people who are able to pack up our lives and relocate, to go out into the field of harvest and put in the labor. Now we are all called to be missionaries, but the way we do this varies. 
Some of us are actually, actually go into the fields. Some of us pray fervently for those who are sent. And some of us support the missionaries in one tangible way or another. By supporting my wife and I, by true extension, you'd be contributing to the very important and necessary labor of love that is being called for in Mexico. Help us be the arms and hands that plow the fields, the appendages of God's work connected to the body of St. Philip's Orthodox Church, a parish community that has a heart for fulfilling the Great Commission. Let us do more than our predecessors to answer the call to bring the fullness of faith into Mexico, to incarnate Christ into the soil of their land and into the hearts of its people. If anyone has questions or would like to speak with us personally, we will be at coffee hour. And we will also have a sign-up sheet where you can leave your name and email address. And this way we can send you newsletters and keep you abreast of the work that's being done in Mexico. Uh, we will also have a slideshow running, uh, a picture slideshow, and, um, and it will show you some of the stuff that I've been talking about today. My wife and I would like to thank you so much for being willing to listen to this. I know Lenten Sundays are already really long. Uh, we look forward to building relationships with some or even all of you. But above all else, let us remember this one thing, Christ's final commandment. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Thank you so much. Good strength for the fast. Christ is in our midst. Grant, O Lord, a prosperous and peaceful life, health, salvation, visitation, furtherance in all good things. To your servants, Michael and Carolyn, and grant them many blessed years. a beautiful presentation. Thank you. May God bless you both in your finishing up at, at St. Ticons and your, I heard you're studying Spanish a lot. <laughs> in your studies, in your packing up, and your, your moving and unfolding your life and your ministry there. You inspired Father Vitalis. He promised he's only speaking a few words. One minute. Yes, I heard Michael's speech. And recently I was looking uh, at the video sent by Orthodox Christian Mission Centers, and they showed the church in Guatemala, South America, how they built new seminary, new center of orthodoxy. And I saw all these native peoples, maybe thousands, two thousand of them, on the open field, gathered together outside, and the open sky liturgy served. And I saw these people, and as Michael mentioned, South America is, is like a Roman Catholic country, let's say land. And still, those people who come from Roman Catholicism there, they are attracted by spirit of orthodoxy. He said, there's one Orthodox, the rest Roman Catholics, but they all sing the same music. They, said they participate in the same Orthodox service. What is happening there? And I had discussion a while ago with somebody about many Protestants in the United States of America coming to Orthodox Church as well. So what is the difference? And I tried to explain this person that after the split of the Eastern Orthodoxy towards the Rom and Roman Catholicism in the Western part of the world, Christians they live by their orthodox spirit there without realizing that division happened. So people used to live in their local parish life, villages, small towns, and they continue on that ancient tradition of orthodoxy which they did not realize that the division happened. After we had, of course, Protestantism and all these turmoils in history happened, 
Roman Catholics is now competing with Protestant world, all these turmoils, not needed. But what we see here, that in majority of the people of the Western part of the world, the spirit of the orthodoxy was preserved in their hearts, deeply in their hearts. Even they did not have orthodox way of living and way of serving, what, what we call orthodoxia is correct worship. Look at this, correct worship is more external. That's what they are missing. But the faith in Christ is the same. Faith in Christ, deep in their hearts and spirits, remained orthodox. So what we need as the preachers of the, of the orthodoxy to the external world, that just to bring that, I would say, awareness of orthodox way, of that external worship and, and the approach to sacraments as they are missing. Because be, when they lost that connection to orthodoxy, they also lost a lot of healthy understanding of the, of the, of the deep meaning of the holy sacraments. So our preaching is, to bring back that correct understanding of ancient Christianity to them, which they had, have in some degree today. They just need to hear it and to come back to that. And also, when we hear today, we, leave, we, we miss a lot, a lot of workers willing to, 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 to sacrifice their time, energy, and go and, and do something. And when I hear today a lot of young people telling me that they do not know what to do with their life, uh, they spend a lot of time in a computer screen or their full screen wasting their healthy mind, their spirit, and their precious time. I would say to all those young people, a sign, like this young guy here before me, a sign for one of those mission, mission trips. Go and see real people. Go and see real action. Whatever happens out there, you will be changed. You will see life in different di dimension, and you will see yourself now getting useful somewhere there, and you will totally get healed from that screen into reality. Extremely healthy choice for your mind and your spirit. Get real. And the third part, when we hear that the missions are missing funds, uh, not long ago, when we prepared for the great land, we heard the story about talents. Remember that? Five talents, one talent, two talents. Some guys invested, or Christ glorified them, and one guy was one talent. What I can do with this, I will just bury it to the ground. What is the meaning of that? Michael. He mentioned, oh, we need more workers, but we all have excuses. Because I have family, I have job, I have business, I am busy, I cannot go. We are the guys with one talent who cannot go. But Christ says, you should give your talent to the one who trades and he will multiply the talent. What that means, usually when we have no time for missions, we also the given talent for us spent for our earthly purposes, our physical pleasures, advantages, whatever it is. We focus on our physical life in a very selfish way. So the message is, do not bury this talent into your earthly investments all the time for your goods, but take part of that talent and give to the one who will invest. That means part of our income we can invest in those people who are in the mission. And they do that work for us. So that means the little money which I can give to them, this is the money which I lend to those workers. And they do the work for me. So now the little part which I don't invest from my personal life, at least the time I spent on my secular job, if I sacrifice partly to these people who are on the mission, I'm already investing in that internal purpose. So it is being multiplied by other person out there. So when Christ comes, he will give us that praise saying, you are a good servant because you couldn't go,
but you at least supported the one who did go, who did invest, who did make that labor for you. So there is a lot of things can be done with little uh, uh, things, uh, uh, little means, but it can affect a big, big impact and difference around the world more than we can imagine. May God bless you all. Jonathan wants to give a homily now, too. <laughs> Father, bless. Glory be our God. Thank thee, O Lord, my God, that thou hast not rejected me, sinner, but hast vouchsafed me to become a communicant of thy holy things. I thank thee that thou hast vouchsafed me, the unworthy, to partake of thine immaculate heavenly gifts. But, O Master, who lovest mankind, who didst both die for us and rise again, and didst bestow upon us the means thy dread and life giving mysteries, for the benefiting and sanctification of our souls and bodies, grant that they may be for me also a good healing of soul and body, and the averting of everything contrary thereto and the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart and the peace of my spiritual powers. And to faith unashamed, and to love unfaith, and to increase of wisdom and the fulfillment of thy commandments, and to growth in thy divine grace and the attainment of thy kingdom, that preserved by them and thy holiness, I may ever remember thy grace and hence will live not unto myself, but unto thee, our Master and benefactor. And thus, when this life is ended in the hope of eternal life, I may attain to a lasting rest, where the voice of those who keep festival is unceasing, the delight of those who behold the ineffable beauty of thy countenance is boundless. For thou art the true the desire and the unutterable joy of those who love thee, O Christ our God, and all creation him at thee forever. Amen. O Master, Christ our God, King of the ages and maker of all things, I thank thee for all the good things which thou hast bestowed upon me, and for this partaking of thine immaculate and heavenly life-giving mysteries. Wherefore I pray thee, who art good and lovest mankind, Keep me under thy protection and in shadow of thy wings, and grant unto me with a pure conscience, and even unto my last breath, to partake of thy holy things unto forgiveness of sins, and unto life everlasting. For thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of all good things. And unto thee we ascribe glory, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O thou who willingly dost give thy flesh to me as food, thou who art a fire consuming the unworthy, consume me not to my Creator, but rather pass through all my body parts, to all my joints, my reins, my heart. Burn thou the thorns of all my transgressions, cleanse my soul, and hallow thou my thoughts. Make firm my knees and my bones likewise, enlighten as one my five senses. Establish me wholly in thy fear, ever shelter me, guard, and keep me from every soul from deed and word. Cleanse me, purify, and control me, adorn me, teach, and enlighten me. Show me to be a dwelling place of thy spirit, and in no wise the dwelling place of sin. That for me thy habitation through the entrance of thy communion, every evil deed and every passion may flee as from fire. As intercessors I bring to thee all the sanctified as the leaders of the marvelous powers, thy forerunner and thy wise apostles, and besides these thine immaculate and poor mother, do thou receive their prayers of my Christ who art compassionate, and make thy servant to be a child of the light. For thou alone, O good one, art the sanctification and splendor of our souls, and to thee as God and Master day by day we all ascribe glory. May thy holy body, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, be unto me for life eternal, and thy precious blood unto forgiveness of my sins. May this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness, and at thy fearful second coming make me the sinner worthy to stand at the right hand of thy glory, through the intercessions of thine all immaculate mother, and of all thy saints. Amen. O oh, holy lady Theotokos, light of my darkened soul, my hope, my shelter, my refuge, my consolation, my joy. I thank thee that thou hast accounted me worthy, although unworthy, to be a partaker of the immaculate body and the precious blood of thy son.